Okay, we are watching a baby giraffe who's going to be playing mostly Arisa and a little bit of Zarya in this game on Lijiang Tower. This is Silver One on PC. Hey all, I've never posted on here before, but I appreciate someone to review my game. Give me some tips about what more I could have done. I played Arisa in the majority of the match and felt like I was doing everything I could to help my team be competitive. My DPS was yelling at me after the second round that we lost because we didn't have a tank. I should have switched off of Arisa to better counter their Zarya. I switched to Zarya for the final round, but felt like I was even making less of a difference. My main three tanks I play are Arisa, Sugan, Zarya. Is there another tank that I should try and work into my rotation to better counter Zarya tanks? Um, for starters, I don't think you need to play another tank. I think you can just play those tanks better, right? Um, I don't think you have to switch because you see a Zarya by any means. I don't think that Zarya hard counters any of those three tanks by any means. So I think that you don't have to switch in that sense. I think it's just trying to figure out why aren't you getting value and how to, how to get more value. Number one. Number two. Don't let other don't don't listen to other people in the game. This is the short answer. I tell everybody this, right? Everybody is in the game, which means they're all about the same rank, which means they're just as clueless as you are. So don't listen to other people. It, it just especially in the game, in the moment, it's really hard to actually identify like why people are not doing well. Typically, um, I often find where I'm like, oh look, like I feel like so and so is not doing well. Like I have to watch the replay for girl. Like is it actually them or is it you know? For example, I feel like my DPS aren't killing anything, right? But I watch the replay and I found out my supports like aren't healing the DPS. So. They can't do anything because they're constantly super low. Well, that's that's you know not really their fault. Um, yeah, so I would say just ignore people who are being toxic to you. Just play your own game. If you feel like you're doing good value on Risa, stay on Risa. Don't switch just because somebody else told you to do so. Okay, let's play this out. I'm still sick and have to take a cough drop or else I'll be coughing nonstop in this, uh, let's go. In this video, unfortunately. Okay, so the moment you see the Winston... All right, let's talk briefly about the, the, the Orisa versus Winston matchup. So when you see Winston, first of all, I can tell Winston's not very good just by the angle. Right, You can tell that he took a very vertical jump here instead of a more horizontal jump. He has a lot of air time where he could have been shot and poked down uh, a good amount already. Number one. Number, anyway, so for the Orisa versus Winston matchup, okay, you have two options. Either one, focus the Winston when he dives into your team, or two, go after his backline when the Winston goes in. And what you do is highly situational, but it basically comes down to, did the Winston overextend? As in, when he jumps into my team, can I kill him or nearly kill him? Then I should go for the Winston. Otherwise, go for the backline. So I wouldn't open with Javelin there. I would personally shoot first and save Javelin for a better opportunity, because I would be afraid of, for example, him bubbling off the Javelin. So I don't think spin there is good, right? Because you're already pretty close to him, and you know he has leap because leap comes down every six seconds, which is pretty fast. He definitely has leap off cooldown right now. So he's already in your team, okay? He's doing this terrible jump, like directly upwards. Don't throw javelin into the bubbles, right? You're just kind of burning him down because he's super low. The supports aren't killing him for some reason, okay? This I think is a good spin, and I think that's a good javelin to kill, right? I think it's a well executed play. I don't think you back off here. I think that you're worried about the bubble, but instead of backing directly backwards, go right onto the point, because you have cover here, right? And then your supports can also go through the bubble and heal you on the other side. Like, minor details like that don't matter in this fight, because this fight's already over, but... And you do a good job if you're simply losing here, right? Preventing the game at the Mercy. Good javelin. So far, I'd say definitely you're out playing the tank. All right. Kill, kill a Hanzo. You probably could have killed him without javelin. Just a little better here. All right. You got slept. Hog's coming out. Uh, I don't think the hog had time to environmental you, but I would definitely be thinking about that. Pulls you two, you spin. For the record, in this situation, I actually would, would turn. After you, you do the initial spin, I would turn and run backwards. That way you go very fast around the corner. Because I really don't want to get stuck here in the middle. Right? You're moving relatively slowly coming out of this fight, but if you just turn and spin. Like, yeah, you'll take some right clicks in the back, but it's not, it's not, not 477 help. So, big thing I think about here is the only way this hog ever gets across this bridge is he environmentals me. Right? Pulls me off the map. There is no way this hog could, there's no world where a hog can push into an Orisa here. Between Spin, Fortify, and Javelin, this hog will never cross this bridge. I don't care if he's top 500 hog, he cannot cross this bridge against you unless he hooks you into his team and they instantly kill you, which is very unlikely, or he pulls you off the map. Okay? Big thing to think about right now. And he pulls you off the map. <laughs> so again, that's actually the only thing in that situation that you had to worry about is is exactly what just happened right there and you should have known that was coming how could you avoid that well number one is don't play so far away from the corner 
Stay right here and jiggle peek. Okay? Like this. Because at least then, even if your timing is wrong, he cannot pull you to the left. You know what I mean? Right? He, he'll never get an angle because he he'd have to stand right here. Because so little of you would be visible, he, like he can't get to see like at least 50% of your body to hook you, he would never be able to hook you around the corner. Instead, he would have to go wide and hook you this way, which number one, exposes him to more angles, more spam, right? From your team over here, they'll be helping you, presumably. And when you see him going wide over here, you can javelin him, javelin him off, number one. Number two, is that you can use spin if necessary if you get scared, right? You can spin him off and force him off, right? And you can use fortify. You have so many options, or you can just literally walk away from the corner. If you're like, if you don't have, if you use spin at a bad time, you're like, oh shoot, I'm spin, just step back and wait for him to come right here. And then you can just force him off with javelin or spin away back on cooldown or any number of options, okay? The worst possible thing you could do is step into the open, which is exactly what you did. I honestly think that if you didn't get hooked off the edge here, you, your team probably wins this map. This, this one play probably results in the just, just because it's so hard to retake the point at this point. Okay, so you come back right now, you see that you've lost one. Okay, you've traded, so you're even. You've lost one, you're down one right now. Okay, you're going in, you try to okay, get a kill. So you're even, but they res the Genji, so you're down one, right? Net, net down one. However, that's in terms of absolute numbers. You notice that your team is staggered right now, and your DPS and Mercy and Kiriko are just not there and ready for you. So right now, you are engaging into a one-on-three, about to be a one-on-four. So this is 100% your fault. You All you need to do right now is chill, right? Play for time. Play over here, play at the corner, right? Wait for your team. Look back at your team and see where they are. Okay, so now you're just going to you're never gonna kill a hog who's being double pocketed. This is, I, this is why I tell tanks all the time. If you're attacking somebody who's being who's being healed by two supports, you have zero percent chance to kill them. Unless you have an ultimate that's gonna insta kill them, there is no way that you will kill them. It is a waste of your time here to be trying to kill the hog. Right? You notice your Genji's in the back line? Genji has two bars right now. So if you spam them even a little bit or hit him with one javelin, he's dead. Way more valuable than, than messing with this hog right now. You get hooked and then you get killed. Because you wasted your cooldowns, you went in too early. Targeting the wrong person. So right now, what's the, what's the situation? Okay, you got four up here. All right, they got two respawners. Definitely a winnable situation. You're, this is a situation where you're going in. And why do I have to look at it like this? In game, I would know, right? Because I would play this back slowly, and I would know based on looking at the kill feed who's up, who's down. You pop soul hog. All right, good javelin. All right, go kill. Great. Right. This might be one. Genji's here. I spin. Right. When I see this, I don't want the Genji to be able to get anywhere, right? I hear him at the corner right here, I spin into him and force him backwards, right? I don't give him a good angle to try to, to try to blade into my team. Spin, by the way, blocks melee attacks, including Genji's blade, so you don't take any damage. So you pop four five, but that's honestly not exactly what you need to do here. You really need to be targeting this Genji down as fast as possible. You have to javelin him. You're spinning, but he's, he can still hit your team right now. He kills the Mercy. Right. Gets walled off. Don't kill Genji, kill the Mercy. Right. You see that? Feel that? Great. Good. You kill Mercy. Right. Spin into him right now. Right? He's super low. You could have spin, in, spin into him. Get 40 health. Right? Spin into him and kill him. Javelin. Right? Good. You see it. Right. That's exactly what would have happened if the hog tries to push you before. So again, this fight is won as long as you don't get hooked off the edge. There's no reason to be... I don't know why you're rotating here. Like, why, why go over here? I don't know what indication you have that they're going right. You should play here. This is the best default spot because you can hold left and you can see whether or not they go right and just constantly keep looking like this, right? And then you can tell which way to go. Don't pre-rotate here. That gives up the, the, the bridge, which is the hardest part of the game. Junkrat's fault for dying there. Nothing to do. Again, you see how you're playing way too far back, right? Your Mercy goes for the res, which should be safe if you're playing here, but you're playing way too far back and as a result, your Mercy's going to get blown up. You have to move forwards. Just kind of spin. You gotta see how see how much heat you've gotten. You just filled up ninety percent of your heat, and you hit zero targets. <laughs> like you gotta have some more trigger display. Okay, again, don't get don't get environmental. Right, very important not to get pulled off because the hog can step over here and hook you off. Okay, like right here. 
hard to do with the camera. Right here, he could hook you off the edge. So don't don't let that happen to you. Again, that's the only way you lose this fight. Pug versus the Riesel. Yeah, see? Pug's looking for it. You feel this time. By the way, save Javelin to, to uh, stun the Hog when he hooks a teammate. Right there. Again, you see how you give up the bridge? All you have to do is stay here. Right here. And they will never cap the point. Yeah, the Reaper's there. You have four other teammates to deal with the Reaper. Okay? The Junkrat's dead because you were you were weren't standing here. You're sitting here, your Junkrat never dies. Okay? This one Reaper is not gonna cap the point. One tracer, not gonna cap the point. Doesn't matter, right? One fair mercy, not gonna cap the point. You don't need to deal with that. Your job is just to hold back the rest of the team. Love this. Okay. So you ulti here, which I think is just about the right timing. The problem here is you drift to the left instead of going to the right to pull in the backside of the team. You also should have been attacking the Reaper the whole time, who was incredibly low. Right? So we watch this. Let's watch the Terror Surge. Right? So Soldier is trapped. Hog was already next to you. And the Mercy is too far, and the Reaper wraiths. So this is only going to hit the Hog, because the Soldier's going to free from it in time and just run out of it. Right? So this is a bad Surge. It was almost the right timing in the right position. If you went to the right, into towards the Mercy and pulled it in, then it would have been an excellent ulti. But now you get almost no value for this ulti. <coughs> Again, I would be very careful about, about wasting uh, Javelin. Because you can use Javelin to interrupt Hog Hook. You can spin here, right? I would not have retreated this far. You have two supports on you. You do not need to retreat this far, right? You also know the Hog's running the ammo because he's been shooting you, right? He's a 2 out of 5. I know, because as somebody who also plays, I play all tanks, pretty much all the tanks, right? I know he's shot you multiple times. I know he's almost out of ammo. So you're running back thinking like this damage is going to keep continuing, but it's not. He's about to need to reload soon. So you should have retreated no further than here. Then you would have spin back up, and then again you just push him right off the map, right? You push, 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 push javelin, and then, and then you win. Even with nano, it's nothing. Can do right? You see now you're too far away, and he doesn't go nearly far enough to go off the edge. And now you have to deal with nano tog who has reloaded. And now you have to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, so this is just kind of um, like basic, basic Arisa versus hog stuff, but also understanding. Like, when you're at an advantage and when you're at a disadvantage. Again, that is a, such a hard position for Hog to win. It is really, like, a virtually one fight. Like, I can't imagine, like, Hog with Super Sound there and think that would be successful. Okay, you kill a soldier, but the problem is you're still down one. It's very hard to win this. Okay. I don't think your team is with you. They are not. Your team is not with you at all. There's no way you're going to win this fight. So I think at the point where you go in right here, I see that. I turn around. I turn around and go home. There's no, we're nobody's winning this fight. There's still four people alive on the point, right? Just turn around and go home. Instead, you go in here, you fight. Okay, you waste some time, right? You waste another 20% instead of just being able to group your team right away. Versus dead again. I gotta wait. There's nothing I can do. Just wait. Just wait. Right? Pushing in right now is a huge mistake. It's a four or five situation. You got time. You have time, right? See, you have time. You don't need to be going right now. Once again, you're going in too early, right? Into a one on five situation. You need to wait, like, a, slow down a little bit. I think you're, you're trying to slow down now, but now you the problem is you forced Fortify, which is a huge cooldown, 12-second cooldown, right? You need to save, you didn't need to Fortify here. You need to save Fortify for when you're actually committing to go in. And now you have no chance of going in. You're just going to get blown up. Ooh, bad track. luck more than anything else, but we'll take it. Alright, cap point one. All well, the teams make mistakes too. Round. Okay, they've got Zarya. You don't shoot the bubble like this right call. Don't stay on the soldier uh, disruptor. It does 200 damage uh, over, I think, like 5 seconds or something like that. It does a lot of damage, and it feeds her a ton of old charge, so don't, don't stand on this, right? You can just step out, go to the right, for example. Or if you really want to play the left, but I think I would step out and go to the right. Don't just ignore the bubble. You can get 
this is a bad time to use spin. Why? Because ultimately, it doesn't actually get you close enough to be a threat. <laughs> it gets you close enough that Zarya can beam you, but not close enough that you can put enough pressure on the Zarya to scare her. And you haven't effectively taken this space. Your team cannot safely stand here, right? Versus if you walked up a little closer and then started spinning and pushed them back behind their lion statue, then you're in a different situation, right? Then this area becomes safe. So now you're going to be stuck in Bone Omen's land, right? You're at 60% you're at health. Your team is unable to heal you because you've gone around the corner. You haven't stopped their team from blowing up your, your back line. And you see they're trying to follow you, but they're getting killed. So this is 100% your fault. You're way too greedy here trying to run to the point. And you pop Fortify, which is not the right call. Okay. You see, you're like messing around with this Lucio, but your back line is getting completely obliterated. You might cap here, but their team is in such a bad position. Again, if you're gonna fight Zarya, decide if you can kill her, right? After you Javelin, can you kill her here? I don't assume I assume I can kill her. Just two supports here, or one support plus the Lucio, who's gonna be here soon, okay? I would not assume that the Zarya will die here, right? With Lamp and Regen Burst and the Baptiste still there, I cannot kill the Zarya here, especially since she's getting higher and higher energy. I just wanna just wanna poke her down. And if you're gonna poke her down, don't get within range of her beam, right? Do you see she beams? If you stepped just Oh, you see, you see what this is? You step just slightly further back, the Zarya cannot shoot you, and you can just constantly spam her. And when she comes walking forward, just keep shooting her and force her to run to to, to run at you, right? You're not playing the beam stuff, okay? So now you use spin, which does nothing, right? Against beam, spin does not stop beam. Uh, but now you use this important cooldown, so you can't use it against sojourn, right? Or to damage anybody. And now you're getting open. So I, I think what's very obvious here is that you don't know how to play Risa versus. Zarya. I can say I'm actually very excited about this replay because I play, I've been playing a ton of Risa. I think Risa is crazy strong right now, and I'm playing a lot of Risa, and very few people submit reviews for, for Risa, so I'm very, very happy that you did. Okay. Again, when Zaryas get low, or when tanks get low, don't assume that you can get a kill. That's not what it's about. Okay? Unless the other team messes up severely, in neutral position, no tanks ever die. I'm going to make this abundantly clear. In neutral position, in 5-on-5, five five, where everyone's there and present, tanks never die first. Never, ever, ever. Okay? Unless they make an egregious error, tanks never die first. So don't do what you're doing right here. Like, poking her down is good. But once you get her low, right here, and she pops both, stop shooting. You're not going to get the kill. Okay? You can go for the fair here. You could dock here, right? And hopefully she charges after you with bubble. But I assume she's going to get healed and not die here. But after bubbles are down, then you can kill her. Right? You give it her. And now you can kill her. Right? Now she made a mistake by stepping too far forward. Again, look at your usage. Okay, so this was very risky. So you start pursuing this Baptiste when you are very low, right? Spin, you get booped out. So at this moment in time, I mean, I guess your 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 Kiriko is not with you, which is kind of the problem. I probably instinctively would have come back in. You actually end up getting the Baptiste kill, but this is, I would say, atypical that this happens. I think usually the Baptiste lives and you die. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you should have gotten the Baptiste kill here. I think that's, that's the other team messing up. But if we analyze, like, why did why did this fight go wrong? So, everything looks like it's going good, right? Kirka's here. Your soldier's here. Where is your Anna? Your Anna's dead. How did your Anna die? Was your Anna ever here? How long ago did she die? What the heck? Oh, yeah, she just gets right clicked here. That's really unfortunate. Okay, so your Anna dies here. There's only you can do about that. <laughs> you go to the Lucio, but in reality, you should be going after the Baptiste. He's crazy low, literally just lamp that's saving him. Kill lamp. Alright, you get that one kill, which is great. 
start trying to kill the Lucio here. There's a lot of, I think if your tracking was better, the Lucio dies. And then you're not forced, and then you can use spin to go after the Pharah and kill the Pharah. So you're up one, you're even. Okay, good, right? That's a, that's a great javelin opportunity, right there. Back up. So you see, she's come in, she's committed, she's in bubble. Right, right now, javelin her. Right, she's gonna go back, she's gonna hit the wall, she's gonna take 100 damage, and then you can commit. Right, I would assume that she probably has one more bubble soon, but if she doesn't, like if I wait a couple seconds she doesn't bubble, then I use Terra Surge. Right, javelin comes out too late. They use beat. Okay, back up. So they use they use their powerful support ulti. Why are you pushing in? Right? Everybody on their team has like plus seven hundred health. This is not the time for you to be like, let me let me go in and try to fight them. Right? See how much health they still have? Hey, sorry, just microwaving you. Get the nano. So for the record, what I think you should have done, right here, it's literally just walk back. Just walk back right here. Walk back into the choke. They'll come in because they use beat. So they're going to come in at you, then spin in and use Terra Search. Would have been a much better version of this and would have accomplished the same thing. Okay, you're having a lot of tracking problems. Go for the Baptiste, don't go for the Zarya, kill the Baptiste. Like this, the Lucio, is the, especially because you have trouble hitting Lucio, go for the Baptiste, right? The Baptiste has just been standing there in the corner just shooting you the whole time. You uh, miss so many shots here. I would say your accuracy in this fight is under 10%. Yeah, I mean, literally, like you got all, all the resources there, right? You got nanoed, you're getting pocketed. You gotta hit shots. Again, I don't think the Zarya is strictly the problem, right? There's, I don't think you're like it's like, oh man, Zarya is really like hard countering. Like, no, you you have opportunities, like plenty of opportunities here to get kills. You're just not executing on them. So coming back in here, you're in a really bad position. You basically need to run straight to the point. <laughs> I would assume Zarya has grab here because you haven't seen Zarya's grab the whole time. And I'd be thinking about eating it with spin, spin, wheel, eat, grab. And it is incredible play when you do it. But if you spin too early, you're gonna get grabbed. I mean, 10% left <laughs> playing Arisa, <laughs> there's no way you can get to the point in time. <coughs> Another day in the okay, so this point is, I would say, even even better for Arisa, right? Nice close range fights. Take high ground, always take high ground. Go take white room first. All right, no reason to do this. You see how helpless you feel? Like when you step in here, like, oh, well, first of all, you're playing Zarya. Uh, second, it's like, what are you gonna do here, right? Do you have anybody to zap? Do you have anybody to, to right click really? No, they all have cover, right? They have lots of good angles. You're just stuck in the open. This is not a good place. Just take white room. White room is so important to winning, to winning this match. Okay? See, like you're not really doing anything right now. If you had been just going this way, you could have been zapping the Zarya the entire time and forcing her back. Okay, now you're standing on point. Reload. Always right click when you're at low ammo, because it does full damage and uses small ammo. Okay, you're zapping the Zarya, but actually right now is not the time for you to be zapping the Zarya because the Zarya is full health and has two supports. If anything you should target here, you should actually target the Baptiste. Okay, Lucio does not actually heal that much. You can kill the Baptiste even with zero charge. You do 90 damage a second, which means that Baptiste will die in slightly over two seconds. Okay, <coughs> so Baptiste obviously has cooldowns, but he's used all of them here to heal his team. You are at 40 energy, so... I'm going to ballpark and say you're going to do about 120, 125 damage a second, give or take. You kill the Baptiste in two seconds here if you zap the Baptiste. Obviously, you're perfect tracking. Right? Instead, you see, you get, you get low, you don't right click at the end. I, I think your Zarya mechanics are just much worse than your recent mechanics. I can sort of tell between the tracking, the bubble usage, the not, the, no right clicking. By the way, to if someone's going to your teammate like that, Right click right in front of them, and it'll bump them back. The bump back on right click is actually not trivial. Um, you can prevent a Ryan, for example, from swinging at you by continually right clicking his feet. 
dead. You see how you're, you're having trouble? Like, watch your, your tracking, okay? So you're good, then you're off, right? You're good, and then you suddenly snap off, right? It, you're not missing, per se. Like, you're actually, it's probably mechanically, I, I don't know if you're hitting the edge of your, of your mouse pad or something, but you're, you can't smoothly track. Okay, so what would smooth tracking look like? Smooth tracking would be like, she's going left, she's going right, she's going left, she's going right. And like maybe she's like zigzagging and you lose it a little bit, that's fine. But it, you're like kind of like, I'm staring at her, I'm staring at her, and then you snap off, and I'm staring, 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 and then you snap off like that. Like you struggle probably with just cons like at calmly and consistently, smoothly moving your mouse left and right on, on the mouse pad is very important. Right? You see you see that sudden snap away? There's no reason to miss that. The Zarya's not dodging. Like you're just you're just straight up like going off of her. Right? Again, you see how you're you're f you flick so much, right? You're like go 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 flick 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 instead of just follow her left, follow her right, follow her left, follow her right, right? That's really key if you're going to play Zarya at a higher level. You have to get good at tracking. Really really good at tracking. See again like with slow speed, it should be very obvious like your aim issues. Again, you see how much you could easily have killed her. Like, you see she's purple with only 100 health. With only slightly better tracking, she would be dead by now. Again, you see your ammo zone, you should right-click at the end to get that extra damage in. Right? I mean, you're just having a ton of trouble tracking. Like, this was a perfectly fine fight. You could have killed the Zarya very easily. You just don't have the mechanics to do so. Right. Aim misses the wall. Right? This is not a time where you can be aggressive, okay? The Zarya has high energy, they have defensive advantage, your mage just wasted wall. This is not the time where your team is strong. This is not the time where you are strong. You're coming back from spawn, you're building energy, you don't have you don't have bubbles, okay? What you did right here is crazy. May wall pops, okay? So the second I see this, I already assume we're just at disadvantage. Because our May used her most important ability, which is wall, and it missed. So I know we are at a disadvantage right now, number one, okay? Number two is they are all clustered up better than we are, right? Because they are they are prepared. We're spawning, right? We're, you know, the Anna's like reloading or something around the corner. I know this is not the moment where we're good. Number three, there's Zarya's high energy. I'm low energy because I'm coming back from spawn. I have to use bubbles to just build energy here. So that means that there's Zarya can use bubble to save her life. I cannot. Again, reason why I'm not strong. So for you to be pursuing like this, running straight at the opposing team through this tiny choke, that, that just frames you completely, and it's like, hey, look, shoot me. Everyone's going to shoot you here. And yeah, you use bubble, and you get energy, and then you just walk backwards in a straight line and see how quickly you get melted. Okay? You're walking forwards, right? You bubble, bam, 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 bam. You're at 442 right now, 360, 328, 190, 160, 150, so fast, 130. Okay, and now you're nearly dead, and this wall's about to break. Right? You wisely take cover, but the Zarya, if the other Zarya is smart, she just walks into you and kills you. Because, again, she's high energy and she knows you have no bubbles. Unlike her, where she has bubbles, right? This is her bubble. She used it too early. But she has a bubble. She has high energy. She will kill you. Okay? At 200 health, there's nothing you can do to stop this if she decides to push it. She does not do this correctly, right? She could have just pushed into you and killed you. You're being very aggressive for somebody with 125 health. Okay? You get some energy. You go for the Surgeon, which I don't think is necessarily a bad call. I think that's... that's that's good here, so kill Soldier. Soldier can't navigate the map backwards. Okay, you should wait till she starts zapping you. You should pop bubble here. Okay, I guess you don't want it. Reload. Okay, grab. I think it's a, it's a good grab, but is your team able to follow up? Yeah, your team should be able to follow up here. Um, I think you, you just don't have enough health to make use of this grab. Right? And if I grabbed right here, I don't go to the left, I go to the right to cover and then have my team, my Kiriko, like continue killing me. It's a lot easier for her to heal me on the right than it would be on the left where she has to expose herself to heal me. But either way, so the rule is if I grab and I don't have full ammo right, right here, which is you see a good, good grab opportunity. First of all, have you even seen Lamp go off? If you haven't seen Lamp go off, this is a terrible grab. <laughs> he, he has used lamp. I don't know if you tracked it or not. But the rule is, if you grab someone when you don't have full, full ammo, right, you're at 62, that means you're relying on your team to kill them. Do you think your team can kill these four heroes that fast? I don't think so. Not just Soldier, right? Right, Helix, etc. Maybe he kills one. Not enough to kill everybody to turn this fight. That's why I would reload here and look for another grab opportunity. I don't think this is the right time. Plus, get health. You don't have enough resources to be able to win this fight. Which is kind of what happens.
Okay, so you get in front of her, which is right, call. Oh, you should have died there. Like, you, you dropped all the way down to 95. You see, don't run in a straight line at her. That makes it very easy for her to just right-click you in the head, which is power, what happens here. This ends now. See, you're just running in a straight line. No zigzagging, right? You're literally running in a straight line. You should be dead right now. Right? If she hits that shot, you die. Big mistake. fight. You have no energy right now. So in this situation, you're often going to be bubbling other people instead of yourself, because no one's going to be targeting you. But you've wasted all of your bubbles somehow. And have zero energy, which is really unfortunate. I think it's a reasonable bubble, right? It looked like the Junkrat was shooting her Moira. Right? I would notice that they're shooting something else up there, so I would look to be like, what's going on? Right? You pop bubble, you have energy, but the problem is you don't have healers. You take way too much damage from the Junkrat after he dies. So watch, you're 475, 400. I, I don't play that aggressively, right? Don't walk this far forward, play this, use cover. Okay, he dies. As soon as he dies, you need to walk away from these mines. Is that what happens? Nope, you walk into them. And you see all this damage you just took from that? You just took like almost 200 damage from this, which is really important in the clutch situation. You're at 60 health, can you, hold, can you get bubble off in time? Right? Hold down, in this situation, hold down the bubble. Hold, shift, right? Hold down shift and it will pop it as soon as possible. So in clutch situations, just hold down shift. Okay. Um, what to say? So I would say your recent play was actually pretty good overall. I don't think you have a good aware, like map awareness and understanding when you are at, at advantage and what you need to do to win, right? Or simply like to stalemate, especially when you have defensive advantage, you're not making good use of defensive advantage. Let's just put it that way. Um, obviously, ability to use the generator could also be better. On Zarya, it really looks like you don't know what you're doing. Um, I think your Arisa play is probably justified for Silver 1. I think your Zarya play is significantly worse. Um, it's probably mid to low Silver is how it feels. Um, the, tracking is, the tracking is poor. Uh, if you can't track Zarya, right, just Zarya, who's like a relatively large target, that's going to be much harder for you to track like DPS and supports, for example. I think you need to work on the tracking game. Number one. Number two, I think the the bubble usage is okay. You don't understand when you can walk over the other team and when you have to be def like play play passive, right? Play safe. And the important thing is when you're low energy, you use bubbles to get energy and take space. When you're high energy, you use bubbles to stay alive, right? And then you just microwave people and kill them really quickly. But none of the play from the second <coughs> second or third map <coughs> indicates to me that you feel comfortable with Zarya um, in this in this matchup, right? Or just at this skill level, it feels you feel, it feels like you're very overwhelmed with Zarya because you're having trouble with the tracking, you're having trouble with the bubbles, you don't know when to push, you don't know when to, not to push. I don't think you're keeping track of the kill feed either. So I think all those things combined together are just things that you can improve on relatively easily. Cool. Hopefully that's helpful.